All right. I think we're live. Oh, I'm live. Yay. All right. This is my first time ever to go live. This is pretty exciting. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. And uh, today we are going live because I have not had any time to edit or anything. Uh, actually, it's my hubby's job to do that. So we've been kind of busy. So I said, you know what? I'm going to learn how to do this. I'm going to learn how to go live. <sighs> just take a deep breath and do it. So, because I do all my shows live anyway every week, so we're just gonna do it this way, so it'll be fun. Uh, so today we are doing a lovely picture with roses, and I have something special to share with you. We are also doing templates with this one, so it makes it really easy for y'all to do this with me at home. So I have a little uh, picture template here, and this is how it will look for y'all when you put it out. So anybody can just print it out on your computer, uh, very easy on any standard copy paper. And all the information is in the description below with this lovely video. And then um, also you can uh, find my website there, tipsyartist.com, supply list, all that awesome stuff that you need to find all of this. So it's all there, uh, really easy. So again, this is what I use and I trace it out ahead of time. And then let me show you, I have a Sharpie. That's actually what I prefer to use when I do my tracing. Uh, I do prefer to use a Sharpie that way. It actually does continue to show up through the paint. And quite honestly, it allows you to be a lot more messy and sloppy, which I just love. I love being messy and sloppy. Kind of loose and free and not having to worry too much about losing those lines. So Sharpies are awesome. Always use those. Let's talk about our supplies a little bit. Make sure that we're prepared for all of this. So I do have uh, my paint ready to go. I'm just using regular um, student grade acrylic paint. Got extra mixing plates nearby. I've got lots of extra brushes nearby. Uh, the brushes that I will be using, these are pretty standard for me. Um, I've got my Big Daddy, as I reference these. This is what I call Big Daddy. And then I have my Mama brush. Then I have two sweet little kiddos here. I have Little Betty and then Little Bit. All right, and then I have a bucket of water nearby. And then let's see what else. Um, towel, bar, you know, I just, I really actually prefer a bar mop. It's quite a bit more absorbent, easy to use. But if you just have paper towels, that is also really, really awesome. All right, so to get started, we've got our paint. And then I'm going to just use a dry brush. So here it is, this is my dry brush. This is Big Daddy. And then I am just going to start uh, by mixing up a really pretty light creamy color for my background. And real quick, let me show you the inspiration. So this is the inspirational piece. This is, I do uh, 16 by 20s in all my shows. Uh, with my, and always, please, please, please come out and see us. We are in Guthrie, Oklahoma, um, right across the street from the Pollard Theater, which is like, it's the world's most famous theater, of course. Uh, but we're right across the street from them. Uh, I do think they're the oldest and most established in Oklahoma, so most famous here. But anyway, we're across from them, really easy to find. We have a big 10,000 square foot building. We'd love for y'all to come paint with us. We have a bed and breakfast here. So if you get too much wine, you can stay the night with us. And we're about to open our second B&B too. So lots of fun stuff happening there. But anyway, this is our inspiration for today. And uh, when I do my online classes, I just paint an 11 by 14. Uh, so it just makes it a lot easier to manage. Also, the templates fit. So that's really great. And then that made it really easy for us to um, allow you all to be able to just put it on your computer. So again, very, very easy. All right, so again, back to brushes. This is my Big Daddy brush. I'm going to mix up that background. And you can keep this a very kind of a cool color, like just a light gray. Um, if you do want some warmth, we can add some cream to it. So I'm gonna show you a couple different options here. So I'm going, I've got my white loaded up. I'm gonna do a little bit of some black because I do wanna cool it off a little bit with some of those gray tones. And so I'm gonna take that brush, I'm just gonna barely touch into the black, just a tiny amount. I'm gonna mix that in. So that will give me a really pretty light gray color. All right, so light gray, and if you wanna warm it up a little bit, if you're a little more, I think this might go better with some of the uh, trending farmhouses that we have, especially here in the Midwest. Uh, but if you like the look of this, we can add just a tiny amount of gold. It kind of looks like mustard. 
and I'm going to do just a tiny amount of this too. So do a little touch of that. Mix that together. All right, lots of white there. So this is my base. And I'm going to go ahead and do this in all of the surrounding areas here. So when I'm cutting in, I'm going to go ahead and hold the brush just like you'd hold a pencil. And this gives me a nice thin line edge to go ahead and come around that shape there. And just keep coming around just like that. That's how we're going to do our cut-in work. Then when I'm working into the larger area, then I want to go ahead and take that handle out to the side and just go ahead and pull it out there. Light, gentle hand. That's what's nice about this positioning. It does feel a little bit awkward, but it does give you that light, gentle hand, which what that allows to happen is it allows a lot more paint to just simply rest right on the top of the surface of that canvas because when we're holding a brush more like a pencil that is better for control but you're digging into the paint a lot more and you're applying a lot more pressure so just keep working this in cut in a little bit here then softly pull out to the side to do that background work here now when i'm starting to come in around these roses remember how i said i love sharpie because it still leaves that line this is where I want to do a little bit of loose overlap and get into those tinier sections in there and I want to be a little bit sloppy with it so I'm not too concerned about losing those shapes that I've pre-traced. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue to paint this into my background. I'm just going to go ahead and take it all the way across. So if you're wondering, oh my gosh, why did she paint over roses? It's okay. I have that done with Sharpie so it will continue to show up. And I'll be able to see it, especially as it dries, the Sharpie will really pop out and I'll be able to see it really well. So I'm going to continue to keep coming around that shape here. All the way around. And then again, turn it back over to the side. And then just continue working this in here. All right, so that was pretty fast and pretty easy. And that is all of our background in here. And if you want to, if you want to create that look of kind of an old distressed uh, barn wood happening in there, you can, and I had a little bit of an accident almost, but it was a happy accident. Um, so I just had just a teeny amount of that black and you can just leave it like that and just actually what I mean by leave it is actually leave a little bit of that pure black on your brush, very tiny amounts though. And while the paint is still wet, because you want that soft blend, then you can just kind of lightly push that onto the side. And then remember to hold your brush more out to the side, parallel to the canvas. That will give you that light, gentle hand. It will also allow that black to kind of softly drag and blend across that surface. And it is softly blending because my undercoat there is still very wet. So that's why it's still, I'm getting that, that soft fused look. So it's a nice look there. And I can even kind of uh, lightly come across my picture here a little bit too. And I don't have to worry too much about those lines because I can still see them, which is awesome. Do the same thing here. Now, when I do come back in from when I'm doing the overpaint over the top, that's when you have to be a little bit more careful and then actually work on those lines a little bit. But for right now, I can be a little bit sloppy with this base coat. All right, so now I've got all of my base coat done. It is just a beautiful, uh, creamy tone uh, with you know, a little bit of gray coming through there. And then I did kind of softly drag that black into it uh, so that that creates that look of that old barn wood, which is really, really nice. All right, so now we are going to do some turquoise. I would like my picture to be turquoise. I think it's really bright and pretty. So we're going to mix up some of that. And then I am actually washing my brush, and I should probably talk to you about that a little bit here. Sometimes I take that for granted, and then a lot of beginners don't know how to wash out a brush. So big bucket of water here. I'm going to take that brush, I'm going to spin it round and round and round in a big old circle. Apply some firm pressure to this. 
And then as I do, it helps release that paint. So you can keep an eye on it. It's starting to run clear. That's a great sign. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out here and then I will dry it off really well before I move on to the next step. Also make sure you get the handle really well too. Um, why it is so important to get excess water out of the brush with this process? Um, because if you do have excess water in your brush and you go to apply pressure to your canvas, which you will have to do, and with that next color, if you still have a lot of excess water in there, it will create what looks like a water run and it will do one of two looks. It'll either run down and actually just act as an eraser and erase all the way down what you've done, or it will uh, make kind of what looks like a mascara run. So both are challenging to go back and correct. So the best way to not have to deal with that is prevention. So just make sure that you dry your brush really well. It's awesome. Okay, so now let's go back and mix a little bit here. We are going to be mixing a turquoise color. So I am going to pick up a dollop of white and then a dollop of blue and then a dollop of green. All right, so we have three equal parts. We have blue, green and white, blue, green and white. And we are going to mix all of those together. And I try to keep it approximately the same in the proportion there. So again, blue, green and white. Quite lovely, awesome. Kind of see how it just almost matches. Oops, that was the dark side. Let me just, yeah, there, that was better. I had way too much blue on there before. All right, so beautiful turquoise, even matches my necklace, it's awesome. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and paint into this shape here. Now, I do wanna leave this white, and you can just leave that white, uh, just the white of your canvas. It is painted and primed white, so that's um, always very helpful, kind of a nice little way to cheat too if you're out of time and just wanna leave something that. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that white, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start to paint into this shape here. So. Starting with the line work first, I'm going to go ahead and hold it like a pencil and do my line work that comes right up next to the edge here. And then we're starting to get a little bit more precise, so I'm going to get my superhero glasses on. And somebody said something. Oh, man, I didn't have my glasses on. I don't know. Hi, somebody. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I promise I'll look at it later. All right, so uh, I've got my turquoise going and I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start to cut into this picture here. It's like that. And paint into it. Now, in order to avoid transparency over the top here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this brush over to the side. Now I'm gonna cut in a little bit. And you can always switch over to a smaller brush too if you want to have a little bit more precision as you start to cut in here. So I've got my little buddy brush now. He is awesome, little buddy, yay. Okay, little buddy has a little flat top. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to cut in around this shape here. See, that was a lot easier, actually. That was pretty cool. All right, so, and then especially for this handle here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut in and do my handle. And this is much easier with my little buddy brush. Much, much easier. So, a lot easier to get into that really small space there. And then I'm gonna come around here. All right, and then I'm gonna have a lot of this covered up with my roses, so I don't really have to worry about filling all of this in. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut in just a little bit up towards the top here. And I can be a little bit sloppy still at this point with the it comes a little bit over some of those roses and leaves that I have put in there. I don't have to worry too much about that because I can come back in over the top and work in those roses later. 
and or those little leaves. All right, then I'll come down here and do the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna come back in with my bigger brush, Big Daddy, and then go ahead and fill this in. And remember, if you're seeing a little bit of transparency in your paint, because we are using kind of a, a medium bodied student grade acrylic paint, it's very affordable, but it is a little bit thinner than uh, like, for example, a Royal and Lang Nickel or um, some of those heavier bodied acrylic paints. So you might run into some transparency. So again, the trick is light, gentle hand and turn it over to the side. And that will really help out. We have a nice, opaque, turquoise water pitcher. Beautiful. Awesome. Okay. Take these back off, and then I'll probably have to use them again to see. Uh, so we are about to start in with our roses. I'm going to rinse out my brushes again here. Roses are so fun. I'm just in love with them. They're super popular and I'm so happy that they are because they're so easy. I love them. So I will teach you a fabulous easy technique with those. Getting that brush clean, making sure it's all dried off. I'm going to do some light, um, light pink roses, maybe some fun little purple roses in there too. And I'm going to get a different mixing plate because I do not want blue in with this. So I'm going to start. I'll put that right there. All right, so I'm going to start with some red. Red. And then um, beautiful violet purple, too. It's quite lovely. And then I'm going to have some white. I always got, I, I go through a ton of white. I love white. All right, so now we're going to do some light pink. So I'm going to pick up a dollop of the white, mix this with the red, and that's going to give me some light pink. Now here's what's cool about this uh, light pink thing. You can do a little bit of white, gives you hot pink, and then you can come in with a lot of white and it will give you a really pretty light, um, like a, like a ba I call it baby pink. Very pretty, but you can see the difference there. So there's a wide range that you can create with just by using a lot more white. So lots of flexibility there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start by painting into all my roses here. And we're just doing all the background color first. So at this stage, I'm just doing just big, flat, amounts of color. And so it will look like just big, bright, colorful, lumpy circles at this stage. And that is awesome. That's exactly actually how you want it to look. So I'm going to keep going here and you can actually make all your roses the same color you want. And, or you can change it up a little bit. We might add a few that are a little bit different with the color in here. I may add a few more um, maybe just a few little purple ones that kind of peek out here at the bottom. So sometimes in my classes I notice people get to this stage and they get a little bit scared because they think, oh my gosh, that looks weird. It kind of does, but this is actually the desired stage that we want. Just that flat pink color. And then I want to go ahead and mix up, I'm going to go light with some lavender, so I'm going to add some white to my purple. Mix that in. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this little circle here of that purple, and I'm going to do one down here, too. 
So we're starting to get a little bit of overlap over the top of our picture. All right, so it's looking very lovely. And then I can um, start to work in the pattern. All right, so ideally I would tell you to give it a little bit of setup and dry time because it does make it a little bit easier to start to work in the pattern. And not too long, but maybe like two or three minutes. Uh, because I'm going live, I'm kind of, I'm working pretty fast so that you don't just sit here <laughs> while I just sit here. Maybe we could just talk about the weather. There's a lot of crazy weather going on right now. So we had tons of tornadoes here in Oklahoma. Uh, lots of flooding. Um, still have some of that going on. We are okay. We are good in our location. And nothing happened here, but, uh, and knock on wood. But, of course, Guthrie has been here for, you know, a long, long time. And our historic building is 1902. So I feel like we're always, always going to be safe here. And I love that. All right. So next step. Uh, I'm actually going to come in with my little bit brush. This is the smallest brush that I've got. Okay. It is a liner brush, and I'm going to go ahead and do a little, um, you can just kind of push it down into the paint. Uh, to get a thinner look, you can actually kind of twist the head of the brush into the paint. That's also a nice little trick. I actually want a heavier amount of paint on the end so I'm just going to kind of just lightly touch into the paint get it you know really loaded up there and then what I'm going to start to do now is I'm going to just do little white lines that are in the shape of like a half circle like half circles um, or another way to think about it tell your brain it is like making a parenthesis the very rounded parenthesis but you know, that's kind of the shape. So we do those shapes all the time, especially parentheses. We, we make that shape a lot. We feel confident doing that. So if you tell your brain that's what you're doing, uh, then usually it helps you relax. And then just do it. So there's a lot of these, and you can be pretty loose and fun with it. I take it all the way around the shape of the rose. Just keep coming all the way around. And then I'm going to keep doing this circular pattern all the way around towards the inside. So keep coming around in a circle towards the middle. So they do get a little bit smaller as you get towards the inside of the rows. So that's the first part, and I'm gonna do this on all of them. So again, this little like half circle. First I do it all the way around. And I keep coming at it from different sides too to keep it different. It creates those layers of like abstracted petals. And same thing on all of them. And in fact, I'm gonna do the same thing even on the lavender one, I'm still just going to use the white first. This is gonna be the first step. So I've looked at a lot of different ways to do roses and you can make it a lot more complicated than this. But my goal is to create paintings that are incredibly easy and relaxing. And so that is why I'm trying to um, accomplish a lot of goals all at once here. So I think you get a, a really nice, desirable look, but at the same time, it makes you feel good while you do it. So that's very, very important. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep pushing this white all the way around. Uh, and another one. Here we go. And another one, and another one, and another one. I love it! It's so pretty! Okay, so good job, everybody. I, I know you're just painting. You're just whipping it out right there with me at home. I know you are. Okay, so we have that. Now, and you could just, I think it's kind of cool just the way it is. However, I'm going to add another step. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my little bit brush here. And I'm going to go with the darkest color for whatever shade I'm working on. So I'm going to go with red for my pink. And then I'll go with purple for my lavender. So I'm going to start again with my little bit brush. And remember what I said about get the excess water out. It's starting to become really crucial at this stage because 
you don't want that water run happening now because you've done a lot of work now and so we don't we don't want any water run so dry up your brush and then you're all good all right so i'm going to pick up a little dollop of the red and then i'm going to go ahead and push it in the center isn't that amazing gosh wow feel proud okay and then just keep pushing it out in a little circle same thing same as before that same step, but you just kind of do it all the way around the rows this time coming back out. And it will kind of softly blend with that white, which is awesome. That's actually a good thing. And so we're getting that soft blend and that really nice look of those abstracted petals coming together. So I'm gonna do this on all of them. Again, there's my little, little dot right there, okay. Nice. And then I'm going to just continue on with the little, um, you know, parentheses, half circles, all that awesomeness. Just keep taking this all the way around. Okay. Man, those are looking sharp. Okay. Nice. I love it. Okay, so beautiful roses are in place. Now I'm gonna come in with purple. Purple, purple power, yay. I won't, I almost sang for you. Mm, no, you don't want that, okay. So a little bit of purple here, little spot. We're gonna to touch this right in the center. Boom. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back around and do that same thing where I just do Looks like little tiny parentheses all the way around or half circles. I'm going live, baby! <laughs> oh, I hope not. I haven't been paying attention because. Okay, so. Yeah. All right, we keep going. I'm almost I'll, I'll... done. We think we may have a tornado siren here, but as I mentioned, we're always okay in Guthrie, so it's going to be all right. I do think I hear a siren. I will really, I will hurry. This is kind of exciting. Okay, I'm an adrenaline junkie. I can do this. We are just about to get done with our um, leaves. Do you hear that siren? I, I do kind of hear it. Well, we've got wine, so I mean, I don't know. What else do you need during a tornado, right? It's like the tornado warning and wine party. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, little bit brush and light green. I guess I better tell you, thank you, be safe, yes. <laughs> we do have a basement, like just right across the street with some good friends, so we'll just take our wine and run over there. All right, so I mixed up green and white and I mix those two together. And this is that same motion where you do what looks like little parentheses over the top. And then we're just gonna fill this in. And I can have fun with this and just kind of place these all over. All right, green and white. And parentheses, parentheses, and then just fill it in. And you can make little ones or big ones. So lots of different fun sizes. It's all good, just a blood warning or something. Okay. Good. Oh, good. Phew. It's just a flood warning, y'all. We're good. There's no tornadoes. That's exciting. Yeah, go back upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was like, I didn't want the video to be that exciting for my first live, so I'm glad it was just kind of minor like that. All right, so still making those leaves. I guess I can slow down a little bit. We're on high ground here, so we're not going to get flooded. Now, um, if you, I'm going to make a few more here. I'm going to do like little tiny ones, little spots of leaves. You can also make like little vines that come down over the top too. 
So for this, I want a finer line. So I'm gonna do that little twist with my brush, kind of twist it out. And then I'm gonna make a little line. And then another little line, okay? And then I'm gonna make a few more of those little leaves that come off of each side. And same thing over here. Okay. Hmm. Um, let me show y'all some more techniques that are really fun because I'm desiring a little bit more filler happening here in this space. So here is a really cool trick. And I love it because it, it just always has the same look every single time. So I take my big daddy brush, but I use the end. See that little round circle right there? And I can push into any color I want and make like little flowers or little accents. So you can, like if it's with white, it will look like baby's breath. So let me show you that first here. So I can kind of dot that down. So I'll just press straight forward into the pane. So white, and then, you know, just do little dots. So I'm gonna add a few of these into the bouquet it really kind of helps soften where the leaves end inside the bouquet because you you may have some abrupt endings in there and so this is kind of a nice way to camouflage that and then just add a fun little accent here too so there's all kinds of fun things you can do with this i do use it a lot for the little flowering effect inside the bouquet and i'm pretty liberal with it the other thing that you can do is also do like a, a pattern. I guess I've done one, oh, here's one more. So you can also do like a pattern on your uh, face, picture, this thing, my Bob, thing that we're painting. Okay, yes. Uh, so let me show what that looks like. I'm gonna do this with a smaller brush. So here's a little bit because I, I like that look, but I, I may want to do it with a little bit more of a delicate touch. Uh, so I'm going to come in with the same, same technique here, brush handle, white paint, and then uh, I can do, see little dots that come around the shape here. And you can leave it kind of simple like that, that's kind of nice. Or you can keep going and fill it all the way in. All right. And now we can do a little word in here. So if you want to take the extra time, you can go ahead and paint the inside a color. Uh, make sure you let it set up and dry before you go in and, and do your lettering. The other thing you can do is using your Sharpie to do lettering is also super wonderful and easy. Or like a paint pen is also so much easier. A lot of beginners really love being able to use these. Now, a little uh, cautionary tale about Sharpies. Um, if you do not have your paint completely dry and you go to write on top of it, it will absolutely just ruin the Sharpie immediately and that's it for your poor little Sharpie. So make sure that your paint is completely dry and then come in with your Sharpie uh, whenever you're coming in to do your painting here. So, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I will probably just write the word love because love's, love's love and love is awesome. Uh, and so you can map it out here with your Sharpie. And then if you want to add a little bit of thickness to it later, then you can certainly come back in or not because actually it's really beautiful with just Sharpie and you can actually create thickness with your Sharpie um, as well, even more depth with it, just by you know, kind of going on and doing more lines. Or you can come back in with your little bit brush and actually kind of reinforce that a little bit. And then I think it is kind of nice to come back in and do just you know a tiny little outline here around this shape in here. I'm gonna do like a, a soft charcoal gray and my little bit brush. I'll give a nice finish 
to this. Let me get my superhero glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a, a nice little outline here. Beautiful. All right. Um, let's see. Signature, I think. Because we're going to leave this kind of simple, just the way it is. Yeah, because I, I could work on it for a lot longer. But all right. Simple, simple, simple. Beautiful. Very fun and easy. Again, remember our templates for you online. Tipsyartist.com. You can read about it below. And also, please subscribe. We love... Um, having y'all come visit with us, even if it's just online, we love visiting with you here. And I'll get more used to this. Again, this is my very first time to do live on YouTube. So um, I'll figure out the technical part and maybe how to say hi back or something. So, and I'll put my glasses on so I can see what you're saying. That would also be nice. All right, but I'm going to sign my masterpiece here too. This is the last and final step. Yeah, I got to sign that masterpiece. So I'm taking my little bit brush. Or you can do this with a Sharpie too later. So I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and just sign here in the bottom corner. And I always like to sign tipsy. Awesome, okay. I think that's it. All right. Well, this has been awesome. So much fun. I'm going to continue to do this all the time. So, um, yay, we did it. My first live. Thank you for being here with me. All right. So, um, I'll be back soon. I know I'm going to do this at least once a week and hopefully more. So, uh, just keep bringing you more and more of these. And thank you again so much for hanging out with me. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Now I gotta figure out how to draw. <laughs> oh gosh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm y'all just gonna be like touching the screen because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's like maybe somebody knows how to tell me how to turn it off. I don't know. See y'all later. <laughs> oh whoops. Hey, there's the there's the outdoors. There's my camera. Oh man, I don't know how to turn this off. I'm gonna be live with you for a little while. Let's see, let's, let's do these little things. Share.